Stick around, folks. You guys can't hear me. We are getting ready, folks, I assure you. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I prepare for you all. Mm-hmm. Better. Excellent. <laughs> That's better. Cool. So, if you guys haven't noticed, yes, it is I, the FL icon, Sean Jazz Stevens, and I am here today as recording in progress. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is the F4L icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. I am here from the F4L headquarters podcast, of course, as we have a very special guest coming on with us very shortly as we are awaiting his arrival. Um, As always, he is always one of our absolute favorite people in the world. Uh, He is a phenomenal young man, and I've had the luxury or privilege, if you would, what the heck's going on here? As my thing is spazzing out. Sorry about that, folks. I don't know what's going on there. Hold on. Uh, (laughs) Interesting. All right. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there, but (laughs) technical difficulties, I suppose. All right. So we're awaiting the arrival of our special guest who will be joining us shortly. Um, he is a person who has been tremendous on his own. He is a guest who has been on here. Actually, this will probably be the record as he has been on now more than anyone else has been on the show, if we're being honest. As we are awaiting the arrival of our good FRL brother F and uh, friend Jaden Brooks. As you can see, we have the preparation for such I'm going to go ahead and blow that up so you're hearing two parts so right now you are hearing the um, audio part of it and then later on you'll actually hear and see our good friend Jaden Brooks uh, who is the young entrepreneur who has the mastermind behind the parental parental uh, possibilities as he's talked about us before, and we have had him on multiple times now. And he's always a very very smart young man. Uh, very, you know, very much um, knowledgeable on various things. You'd be surprised what a young man has knowledge of. Today, we're going to be discussing all kinds of things. Um, he, of course, is into the whole fitness world. He's into being staying healthy and staying fit. Um, also in trying to make the world a little bit better of a place for others and whatnot, trying to encourage others to kind of go after what they do. Of course, he is also uh, featured on our Icons of the F4L YouTube Wrestling Show, in case you guys don't know. Um, and, of course, he is the L- he has been on the show now. You know, Jaden has actually been on the show. Uh, quite about. Speaking of which, I believe we're about to invite him in now. Good morning, Jaden. Can you hear me? Oh, there he is. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? I am. Oh, awesome. Look at this young guy. How's it going, buddy? Going well. How about you? Oh, I'm living the dream. Living the dream. You like my background? <laughs> it's cool. No worries, it's man. Old school, but I like it. It's all right. You're good. You're good. So, Jaden, uh, I was just uh, telling everyone, reminding everyone how you've been on this show probably more than a lot of other people now. This is actually, I think, if we're including the watch-alongs, I think you've been on the show now more than probably most of the guests. How does that make you feel, being a returning guest to the F World headquarters? Yeah, I uh... Good. Always good. happy to come on here. So 
It's yep. always, always good to have Jaden on. As I was telling people, you're a very in, smart young man, far beyond your years, all honesty. Um, and I appreciate that. Oh, no worries, man. No worries. And it's all true. Um, you know, you're very smart for a young man your age. And I was telling people how you are an entrepreneur, which a lot of people who are 13, 14 probably don't even know what an entrepreneur is. Most people are just trying to figure out how to tie their shoes, go to school, possibly. <laughs> Maybe learn how to make their bed, possibly. Learn about hygiene and things of that nature. But uh, I think what you've done is really transcended and done really well for yourself. And, um, you know, we always give you guys praises as well, as you know. So, (laughs) welcome back, everyone. Jaden Brooks, our good friend. It's an honor to be back. Always a pleasure. Love the shirt. That's a great shirt. Oh, thank you, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Is that is that your uh, company logo, or is that just a shirt? Uh, yeah, so this is a it, Nutrition HQ is a franchise that my uh, stepmom and dad are buying, and I'm not exactly sure when it opens, but they have the whole family wearing the merchandise for it, and actually some people in town. So I always awesome. try to support them. Uh, so I just figured I'd wear it. So that's awesome. We're actually going to have your dad on the show next month. How how does that make you feel knowing your dad's coming to the F World headquarters for the first time? <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Uh, You're going to have been, to. He, he mentioned it last night. Actually, he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm going on uh, Sean's podcast," and I was like, "Oh, nice." You're going to have to give him tips and let him know how to how to do this thing because. Uh, he hasn't sure. been on yet, so you're gonna might have to give him tips since you've been here more than anybody else. So uh, you seem to have a good time. You seem pretty comfortable with it. So maybe you can give him tips so he doesn't so, seem so nervous. What do you think? Can you help your dad out, feeling nice and relaxed? <laughs> I'll do. I'll see what I can uh, do for him. Right. So, Jaden, uh, are you in the middle of a workout? Or are you standing up? Is that what you're doing? Oh uh, yeah, I just prefer to stand most times. It helps me. Uh... Think clear. So that's if you see me like waddling or moving back and forth. I, I respect that. You know, <laughs> fun fact: <laughs> I actually don't generally sit still often. Um, yeah. Honestly, doing the podcast is probably the only time I actually sit. But for the most part, when I do my public speaking and things like that, I'm obviously going to stand. And usually, I'm doing laps on a stage normally. Um. So. Yeah. I am familiar with standing, and I actually do feel better standing versus everything else when it comes to talking and presenting and so forth. And by the way, you're doing a great job. Look at this kid. You're keeping up, keeping up with the fitness world. He's a, he's a monster already. Um, Jaden is you know huge on the fitness world. And Jaden, for you, for yourself, what is it about the fitness world that is important for you in general? It's not obviously to become a, like in general, you don't want to become a bodybuilder, right? That's not your ambition. That's not your end goal. Why is it that you have such importance into fitness and being healthy and whatnot? I would like to be around for as long as possible, of course. Uh, You know, be there for everyone that I can be. Mm -hmm. Um think I also love the feeling of improving myself in any way that is attainable and possible. Any way that I don't feel is a waste of time, then I'm going to, you know, use it to improve myself. And I think fitness is also like an outlet, if that makes sense, you know, for any time. If you're feeling down, it's like the closest, it's like, it, there's studies that have shown that it's more beneficial for people with depression and anxiety than even therapy or the pills that doctors prescribe you for most people. So I, it really helps me as well if I'm ever feeling down. So I use it for mental health as well as physical health. And yeah, I don't intend to stop. I'll keep, keep it up for hopefully my whole life. Now, since you've been doing the, uh, you know, since you're, you know, I've known you now for a little while now. Um, I was actually trying to find out when your anniversary date was when you start on the icons, but I think I've talked to you prior to you becoming on the icons. I'm pretty certain. Um, yeah, but- I think I think before I was added to your to the wrestling show, I think you messaged me maybe I don't know. I want to say it was like a month before you added me, but. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. It was a long while ago. A long while ago. It was probably during the 2020s, wasn't it? Wasn't it during 2020, 19 maybe? 
I don't remember. Yeah, it was either very early 2021 or, yeah, very, very late. Or, I mean, not late, but definitely the later part of 2021. Well, we're going to have oh to definitely gosh. find... 2020 or earlier 2021. <clears throat> no worries. But... I'll have to find that out because I do believe your anniversary might have already happened. Maybe it's coming up. Who knows? You've been on the show now for a little while. Um, your brother just started on the show recently. And uh, last time we had you on the show, we talked about what was going to be like to have him on the show and whatnot. And actually, I think that was before we relaunched the new um, show um, on YouTube. And yep. so far, uh, we do plan on having a watch along with Jaden is a fantastic contributor to when we have those occasions. And we do plan on having more of with that eventually. But from... What you've seen so far, how do you like the show so far? How do you like the direction it's going in? And what do you have to say about your brother's wrestling style <laughs> now that he's not there and you can talk about his wrestling ability now, <laughs> now that you've, the world has seen it? Yeah, I, I uh, really enjoy watching them. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, me and him, sometimes I'll be like, hey, Sean just messaged me. He's got a new show out. He's like, all right, let's watch it. So <laughs> let's watch it. Forever, like... If we ever see that one comes out, we're just like, hey, let's watch it. And it's it's pretty cool to see. Uh, yeah, so I've now, let me ask you, you in the show. Well, no worries. It's always good to have you guys on. Now, out of curiosity, um, you know, the show does a lot of things for different people. Um, we've had, we get emails all the time from people saying how, you know, people like yourself have been such an inspiration to them. And when you, I mean, if I was to show you emails from people, you would probably cry. Maybe not. Maybe not a crying kind of guy. But you probably feel the need uh, because they're very heartfelt emails from people from all over the place in saying how amazing it is as someone who is a real person. I mean, you are based, your model on the YouTube show is based on you. And I don't control the outcomes. It's just how it works. Um, but... When I get emails from people who say how Jaden Brooks is an inspiration and they live in Canada or they live in you know Germany or they live in Russia or they live in Ukraine or they live in the UK, do you know anybody on the offhand who lives in the UK, Canada, on, or anything like that? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't talk. I I don't know where everyone I talk to is from. Quite honestly, everyone who messages me. Well, um, I do know, you know, I know I've, I, you know, I have the business partner from Nepal. That's probably the furthest person away. Um, I have, yeah, I mean, that's really, then there's someone I know from Canada, but overall, like, I don't know that many people <laughs> so, uh, who are from around the world. So it's really cool to see. And across the United you know, States, of course. supporting the, the show and having their lives impacted from it. So it's really cool to see. For sure. I was told from a mother in Washington State, that's across the United States on the side, okay. that that her and her kids watch our shows and that you guys, since you guys, I guess they just joined, started watching the shows, but the Brooks Brothers have been a family favorite of theirs since joining because of the um, naturistic style of that you guys used to you guys like to use, and you seem to have a parkour style on the show, and, and they're actually huge in on that. So, what's it feel like to hit, know that you have fans in Washington State who are watching the Brooks Brothers and cheering them on? I guess they were very upset when you guys lost the tag titles, so much so that they were yelling at me, like I have control of that. I said, I have no control over it. I, I don't pick winners and losers. But it, sometimes, much like in life, I think what the show does is it shows that you don't always win everything in life, but as long as you continue working towards it, you can overcome that. And there's nothing saying you can't win again. And, you know, they got, they got mad at me at first, and then they realized that maybe, you know, after watching other things that you have done, because they went back and watched your collection. I guess they have a playlist of all of Jaden Brooks' best matches. Oh, my gosh. And uh, there are quite a bit. I mean, if you were to compile all of them between your solo career, your start, you start in the tag team division, you went solo, then you went, now you're back in the title picture again. Uh, actually, today you have a title match again. 
and you earned that as well. I didn't necessarily have any control of that. You won an off-air tournament. You and your brother destroyed everybody else in the tournament. I can't control that. I mean, Statlin Waldorf from the Muppets, I mean, they put up their best fight. But, I mean, you're not going to beat the Brooks Brothers, apparently. Um, not easy being the best. It's not. <laughs> you know, being the best, which is funny you say that because, um, you know, from your – I don't know how about your perspective. I'm a very competitive individual. And, you know, and I don't know um, if you've done any uh, – I know you're into the boxing world. I don't know if you've actually had a boxing match. But being someone like myself, I've competed in martial art tournaments. We've talked about that before. But for me, you know, one of the things that people forget is when you get to be the, quote, champion or when you get to be at that level where you're very successful at what you do, you should have a target on your back because the people who want to prove themselves should be hunting for you. Is that, would you agree with that assessment? Do you know yeah, what I mean, I mean by that? I think, what'd you say? Do you know what I mean by that? You probably do, right? Yeah, I understand. I think, I, I completely agree. Like, I, it reminds me of that quote that says, if you're being supported by the crowd and people, you don't have, like, haters, so to say, <laughs> then, uh, then you're doing something wrong. You're not, doing something correctly because if the crowd supports you if the majority of people support you if you don't have people who are standing up to you and saying they disagree with you then yeah you're i think you're definitely not doing something right because you know if you're doing everything if you're doing everything right i think there is going to be a batch of people who are uh jealous in a way sort of envious and just don't want to yeah, don't want to see you succeed, but you'll never see anyone who's higher than you downing you. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, okay. Smart. Because, I mean, if you want to prove that you are the best at what you do, then the only way to do that is to challenge the best. And if you don't have someone who's constantly trying to try you, that, or if you're... I mean, it would be like if you were someone who was competing in a boxing match, but you beat the same person over and over again. Are you learning anything by beating the same opponent over and over again? Where you should be challenging maybe the next person. Maybe you should be challenging the champion. But beating the same person, even if you're a champion, you beat the same person who's challenging you over and over again. You you could beat them a thousand times, but you're not going to learn anything more from that if you're always beating them. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Much like, you know, in, in when it comes to hate, you're right. If you're not getting heat from people, if people aren't getting jealous or they're not, well, look at this guy and look at what he's doing, look at what she's doing, whatever the case may be, then you're probably not working hard enough to be some type of impact, you know? I guess exactly. the other way to look at it is as long as, you know, they can hate on it as much as they want, but they're watching you, aren't they? <laughs> they can hate all you want, but they're watching what you're doing as you're succeeding. Where people like me who are trained to know the difference between people who are real life dream masters, people who are out there and work on their goals and dreams and are very accomplished in those things, the people who actually support people who want to see people succeed versus the people who just want to sit there and do the you know mouth and off thing like they I don't know I, I still don't understand how and what someone gets out of you know, running their mouth about what someone else is doing or telling someone like yourself, you know, you're skinny, you're not this, you're not healthy, what, I mean, what are you doing? But yet you're watching them, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're listening yeah. to them. Clearly there's a reason for that. I don't know. That's just my perspective on it. I don't understand why people would follow someone that they just want to hate on. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's just yeah, me. I think- I think also they try to convince themselves that what they're doing is a positive thing. Like they're trying to convince themselves that they're just trying to give constructive criticism or doing whatever, but it's like, and they word it in like the worst way possible. Right. And right. So yeah. they just want an excuse to basically use you as their like emotional punching bag for why they are not <laughs> moving forward in life. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, that's Jaden's fault that he is successful and this other person is going to be, <laughs> Hating on, because you know I give what's considered to be constructive criticism. Because I think honestly, the only way we're going to get better is by, you know, listening to others' feedback. 
um, which is why I ask how people like the show. How do you like things are presented? How do different things? Because I, I accept positive feedback as well. Because the only way we're going to get better in life is if you learn from other people who have won, have done it, or people who can help get ourselves to the next goal, who have been in there and done that. And I think you're someone who has a very vast knowledge of a lot of things, and that's an important thing. I see a lot of other people right now currently who are kind of doing what you were doing years ago. They're just kind of getting into now, but they don't really have a motive, which I don't really understand what that would be. Like that, you asked them like what your goal. Like if I was, to, I asked you a long time ago, what is your goal on getting fit? And you said, well, no, fitness is just something I want to do for my own well-being and whatnot, not necessarily to compete and be Mister Olympia, right? But there are other people out there who that is something they want to do. They want to be Mister Olympia. They want to become you know that. But when you don't have a cure, clear goal on where you're going. What do you think that comes from out of your from your perspective? I mean, I'm sure you've seen just as many people as I have who are doing things that you have been doing since the, pretty much one of the early days that people are kind of adapting and using that kind of don't seem to go anywhere. Do you know what I mean by that? Have you seen a lot of that? Yeah, I think if there's a bunch of people who don't have a clear vision of what they want to do, what they want to push towards and just doing like work and stuff just to be say they are doing it but uh it's definitely important to have goals and a plan if you if you're able to sure now because you know you you are someone who's on the social media thing and of course, this is going to lead us down to the path and the whole uh, debate that everyone's having these days, as far as social media being an impact on people of you know young people and so forth. You are in that demographic of the young people, but I think you're also one of the people who are also educated enough to read into things and read up on things and look into things and to not necessarily listen to the hype. And you are a little bit more into the know versus the just kind of. Um, Let's go with the flow kind of a thing. Let's just go do this crazy TikTok challenge without knowing what this does or anything else. Um, you don't strike yeah. me as a person to do the TikTok challenge that'll put your life in jeopardy uh, versus so many people who just think, oh, well, if I do this, I'm going to do that. So from your perspective, I mean, what role does social media do for someone like yourself, first of all? It definitely taught me a bunch about, I don't want to say self-worth, but it taught me a lot about, you know, not associating your value to the numbers on the screen or to, because, like, I fell into that hole for a long time, and, like, now you can see I don't care. (laughs) And uh, because I've lost, like, 5,000 followers, I don't really care (laughs) Uh, because I just learned to step back. So that's one big thing it taught me because, you know, you're always going to have setbacks and failures with anything you do in life so being able to be okay with that and still move forward and not you know hate yourself for it I think that's a pretty big lesson that it's helped teach me and I still need you know more more time to get better at that as well but it definitely helped put me in that direction at once I realized that sure Awesome. Yeah, because, I mean, that's something I think a lot of people fall down that rabbit hole. And they view their followers as, sometimes they view their followers as friends. Or they view it as some type of, I guess, a clout thing. That, oh, I got so many followers and ain't I awesome. Yeah, but if your followers don't talk to you, don't interact with you, you have nothing positive to say about you, are they actually caring about what they're doing? Are they just, you know, what are they there for? Do you know what I mean? I'm very yeah, selective completely. on... I could care less how many people follow me. <laughs> I actually get rid of half a dozen people on a regular basis because if I get a vibe that I don't like something or something seems off to me or something... I mean, there's a lot of those hmm, interesting people on, especially Instagram, who... That's very true. I have had numerous debates yeah. and fights with over the years. Um, 
I may be responsible for some of them not being there anymore. That I have no no apologies for that. Uh, but <laughs> I'm very happy that I've been able to remove some of the issues. But unfortunately, as you are probably aware, there's still plenty more who are out there. Um, yeah. But I think what's important is people need to understand what the difference is between someone who actually supports something you're doing and then someone who's just being a creep. Um, for you, exactly. for, for, for just, I mean, I, we've talked about it before on the show that one of the things you do is, you know, your dad helps you with little, with things as well, right? Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, same. he got me into fitness and, yeah, I really just started off my journey on self-improvement as well. Right, but also he helps you with any issues you may have on social media, correct? Like if there's a situation, oh, yeah, right. like what I mean is if someone's being like, you know, obviously you know when the the limits there are, your dad will help you with things like that too, right? Yeah, if I came to if I came to him and I was like, hey, how do I deal with this? Then yeah, absolutely. All right, have you had any of those wild adventures yet? Because let me tell you, we get to be that level, then you know you're doing something right. When you have to start saying, hey, Dad, something's going on here. Yeah, definitely have had uh, some interesting people message me from, <laughs> yeah, I don't, probably shouldn't say some of the things they said on here, but yeah. there are some crazy people yeah. that, you, yeah. that talk to you once you reach like million, literally millions of people, as I was getting millions of views a day, so you're guaranteed to reach people who are, uh, not as not as good sure. as exactly that's a good way to put it and uh, you know one of the things that always concerns me and i see it on a regular basis when i see lives for example and you know I, someone invites me to go to a live one of those instagram live things and if i'm if yep. i have time to tune into one of course if you're on there i'll watch you because you're you know you're entertaining you know what you're doing and also you have great knowledge to share with people but if I tune into something like that, then obviously I'm there to watch and see what's going on to offer two cents and help, you know, support. But in that same live, there'll be the same people who will be in that chat and I'll get, I'll start getting frustrated. And I think you've seen it on a couple of times on your lives that I will have no issue holding people accountable for giving you a hard time. I'm very overprotective at times of people. And, like, people will tell you to do things. They'll say, no, Jaden, do not do that. And luckily, I mean, I could think of recently the people are asking you to do these random things. I'm like, no, 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 maybe don't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because, you know, you're not a puppet. You're a human, first and foremost. Remember that. Yeah, that's true. You're, jo- you're that's not a, a trained dog. I mean, a Sc- uh, although Scotty is one of my favorite things to say. Um, but you're not a dog. You're not a puppet. You're a human being. Your job isn't to take orders and kind of do monkey tricks for other people. Your goal is to do what you're supposed to do and become, you know, evolve into the person you're going to be, not be a puppet for other people to sit there and say, oh, you know, do this, do that, do this. That's a good way to put it. I've never thought about it that way, but yeah, that definitely is a good way to think about it. Yeah. I mean, ultimately there's so many people out there who are, kind of fall into that and it's not necessarily their fault it's just the i guess the culture of it they feel like if they don't do this they might lose that follower my way of looking at it was like oh well see you later (laughs) i don't need that kind of a person in my life on my lives i barely have anybody actually tunes into my lives but it's after the fact that's when people will see the lives and then they'll go and met and they'll actually listen to the things i say one of my things I really need to work on is I'm very wordy, I find, and I do tend to <laughs> make sure people know my points very well. So I have a tendency mm-hmm. to be very, very descriptive with my descriptions of things. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am double-fisted drinking. I have tea in one and water in the other. Oh, nice. That's that's always impressive, I guess. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to stay hydrated. I don't know how you're doing not drinking water right now, but that's okay. <laughs> you have your water <laughs> handy off camera. Is that what it is? <laughs> I hope. Uh, I honestly just kind of forgot, but you forgot. Know, I'll, I'll survive. You'll survive. This is this kid. He's good. Anyway, um, so, Jaden, um, let's see. You've, been, you've had a podcast yourself now. How long has your podcast been going on for? 
I've seen three episodes, I think, thus far. Is it three episodes? You have more than that. Yeah. So we've, I think it's, we've started it. We have like a total of like seven or eight episodes filmed, but, uh, you know, we're just, we just got caught up in different Life. things. <laughs> Life? So, <laughs> yeah. So we're definitely working on putting more out, but I'm trying to think when we started it. I think earlier this year, it wasn't, we didn't have it back in 2022, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Uh, is when we actually started being consistent, more consistent on it, and then, yeah, I think it was maybe February ish when we started the podcast. Yep. Now, what do you like about the podcast? Out of curiosity, I mean, I happen to have a pod. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> I happen to have a <laughs> podcast too, so I'm just curious. What made you want to start a podcast? Is it? Do you enjoy talking? Is it trying to get the message out there? What exactly do you like about the podcasting thing versus all the other outlets out there? I mean, outlets. I don't know oh, what else, other outlets out it's there. It's pretty... But... Oh, sorry, what would you say? No, I was just saying, I, I don't know primarily. There's only a few options really out there, but I'm just wondering what got mm-hmm. you into the whole podcasting thing. Yeah, so it was originally my business, one of my business partners' idea, and we were like, okay, if we make film this many podcasts and we film, or and we edit this much every day, then we can put out this much content every month. And it was like some absurd number, way more than we were already doing. So it was the most efficient way to put out content for us, but also I think it's a lot easier to make than like high quality short clips uh, or different styles of content like a long youtube video or a long written post things like that and so i think podcasts are the most efficient and a big opportunity if you want to produce content and get a bunch of supporters i think it's that's where it started for us anyway i agree i think you guys are very articulate and very smart with the way you guys handle your show i've watched all your episodes by the way um (laughs) gotta do your homework on people right um, so you got to do your homework. I also got to worry about my competition here, but you know, no competition. You got to, I'll share it with you. I don't mind. Um, but you know, I think one of the things I enjoy about podcasting is because I've had a lot of experiences in my life. And one of the things that I enjoy about the podcast is being able to share those things with the masses that aren't just in my little niche audience. And there are times people learn something new on listening to the podcast they don't hear on the regular basis. Instagram, all of those types of things, those are really not primarily a way to reach an audience, if in my opinions. I mean, you can. But honestly, you need a platform like a pot like this to kind of get over on there. Um I'm not overly familiar with the whole TikTok thing. I, I am no longer on TikTok. I gave that up. I, I can't figure it out. I don't understand. I mean, to people who have understood it and do it well, hey, all the power to you. But, I mean, I just don't have time to sit there and do a 30-second clip of me dancing or lip-syncing to someone else's thing. Or, you know... Yeah, that, that's, that's out of social media is not... It's interesting. It's interesting, sure. to say the least. Jaden's <laughs> trying to bite his tongue. <laughs> he wants to say something more than interesting. But uh, he's being <laughs> nice and polite, not to offend people. Well, that's okay, Jaden, because on this show, we have plenty of opinions on a lot of things, so we just usually let it fly. Because, you know, li- one of the plus sides of being, you know, here and where we live we are able to say things that we are allowed to say, and usually we're protected by certain rights and so forth, that gives us that right, which is cool. So, it's true. cool stuff. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about mental health in just a minute, because, Jaden, I want to get some of your opinions on modern mental health, because this is something in my era, no one talked about mental health in those days. We're going to get into that, but first and foremost... Jaden's about to told me that he's going to be doing something very, very impressive in his next line, in his next step to becoming, evolving into the person that he is. So, Jaden, what are you starting on Thursday again? Oh, Thursday, I'm starting uh, learning to drive in driver's head. Listen to this yeah. kid; he's growing up, man. Driving, <laughs> driving in the world, becoming another person on the road. What is it about, out of curiosity, what is it about the driving thing that you look forward to the most? Um, I like 
like the feeling of independence, definitely, and not having to rely on uh, other people to do what you want to do. Oh man, sure. spoken like a pure, <laughs> spoken like me multiple years ago. So proud of that. Good job. <laughs> I expected something of that nature. Um, and you know what? That is true. That is kind of one of the reasons. But I think a lot of people kind of fall into the whole, you know. So let me ask you this question because this is kind of, you know, follow along here. What kind of a car, if you were to get a pick a car, like any car you wanted on a regular basis, what is the car that you perceive yourself to be driving versus a car that you think is just like the dream car you probably will never actually own? Um, hmm. Do you know by, what I mean by the both? Yeah, I think I understand. There's a practical car that you're actually one can drive that you know you're going to drive. Then there's the car that, yeah, I'm probably never going to drive that. It would be nice to drive that. Me personally, I'm going to be honest with you, cars do not matter to me. <laughs> Cars, can I get from point A to point... I'm going to tell you my story about my driving story after the fact because these are amusing stories and I love to share them. So, But first and foremost, <laughs> let me t- let's hear about what your car is of choice. I mean, obviously, at first, it's probably... I don't care because, uh, you know, I can't... I'm not going to spend years saving up for, you know, to get, like something crazy nice or luxury um (laughs) at first but i think something i'd like to drive in like a few years will probably be you know some sort of sports car or something probably uh just for fun but dream car i'd say hmm, i don't know probably something along the lines of like a rolls royce or lamborghini would be on that list for sure so What's the car that you think you're going to have first? Your first car, quote, end quote. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I just, I'll just look and see what's available on Facebook Marketplace, probably. Facebook just, Marketplace, smart uh, man. <laughs> then just be like, hey, does it work? Does it and work? Then, does it run? <laughs> that's always a plus that I look <laughs> for. But once, and then once that's proven, then I just <laughs> grab it and wait for and then use it to make more money and then buy another car and nicer. Yeah, I think I would definitely see that as an investment. So then in the future, if I wanted to get something nicer, then I definitely could. So Awesome. Well, let me give you my two cents about driving because driving, it's one of those underrated things, but also I feel like it's something that is an important responsibility. You're doing, yeah. your, you're doing stretches? <laughs> no, there was just a bug. A bug? Oh, fun. A cameo. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Where's your brother's uh, lizard? That'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so fun stories. First of all, do you want to hear a fun driving story? I'm gonna t- I can tell you my fun driving story in Car 101 with someone who knows absolutely nothing about cars. you want to hear it or no? Sure, yeah. Good. Get ready to yeah. laugh. Great. Nick gets to laugh at me. All right. So a lot of people who, you know, people have their kind of niches, things that they know, right? I know a lot about various things. I know a lot about entertainment, production, writing, producing. I can wrestle. I can play various sports. I am very knowledgeable in those things. I'm also very much familiar with what we call stupid trivia or un, or whatever, <laughs> like... I know all. I could probably win Jeopardy or any of those types of things of all the mm-hmm. amount of useless knowledge I know. Love nature a lot. I know a lot about animals. There are things like that because I mean I love nature in general. Health, fitness, things like that. I know those things. Yeah. Cars, on the other hand, that's a foreign language to me. Can can I get from point A to point B? <laughs> um, that's kind of my experience with cars. I know very little mm-hmm. about cars. I have two brothers who are both mechanics, but they can't write or they can't, they don't have the ability to really do what I do. They're not in the entertainment world or anything like that. In all honesty, I have a human services degree too because I can I've, I left that out for some reason. But I also have that. I also have you know two college degrees, no big deal. But I don't know how to you know I basically know nothing about how to put an engine together. I can't tell you anything about how to fix the car. 
I can tell you how to paint the car, how yeah. to put the gas in, how to change the tires, uh, and jump the car. I can do that, too. Other than that, not so much. So one of the things that a lot of people are shocked to learn about me is when I tell them how old I was when I finally got my license and what led me to getting my license. Because, you see, I live in a city, as you probably are know. I grew up in a city where we had a lot of public transportation. And I'm a very practical individual. I'm also a budget-conscious person. So I don't like wasting time, money, or whatever. In all honesty, like yourself, I don't like waiting for other people. I hate depending on others to get me to from where I need to be. I'm also yeah. a very punctual person. <laughs> I like to be places a little bit early. I'd much rather be early than late. I hate being late. I don't oh, like yeah, that 100%. at all. Yeah. I generally will be at a place usually up to an hour early. Even that's kind of late for me. <laughs> um, oh my so I like to be early to places because I don't like having to wait and race rest time. But anyway, because I lived in an area where we had a lot of public transportation and whatnot. When I was 16, you see, you know, that's kind of where in my area you're allowed to go and do driver's ed and, you know, Stop getting your license. You can actually get your license back then at 16. Um, if you did driver's ed or whatever. And I was presented with the opportunity to get my driver's license at 16. Now, a lot of people know from listening to the show, this actually leads into the whole mental health thing too, believe it or not, that I was actually living on my own at 16. Um, I was not living at home with everybody else at 16 because I was emancipated at 16. You remember this story, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember this. So basically, because I was kind of my own person, my own adult, I had to be responsible for all of my different things. But because of that, I was also, you know, in charge of, you know, how to get to point A to point B. And I lived in an area at that point where I was in the process of getting my first apartment. I know, right? It's 17, 18, 17, 18 and getting your first apartment. A lot of people are like, how can you have your first apartment and be a senior in high school? Well, it's not necessarily as glamorous as it sounds. But, so when I was presented the opportunity, we can either pay for your driver's ed, if that's something you want to do, or you can get first aid and CPI trained that you want to do. So... That's random, right? At 16 years old, they, they, they're getting up. Because technically speaking, back then, you actually had to be a certain age in order to qualify for, to be actually recognized as a holder of, this, of the CPR first aid by the American Red Cross. The reason, so I was given that up, the thing. It was either learn how to save people's lives or learn how to drive at that time, or drive. And my thinking was this, well... I'm 16, I'm on my own, um, I have buses and trains and so forth available to me that I can get to from where I need to be. And I've been doing that a long time, and all honesty, I love walking, as we've talked about before. And if I'm being honest, on the scale of traveling, walking is my favorite of all of them. If I can walk someplace, I would much rather do that. I don't often think, how long is this going to take me, or how far this is, I just keep going. Good example, and sometimes it doesn't change. Because last, for example, last week, and right now I'm in, the, I'm haven't gotten my car yet. I'm getting a new car. I do have my license for the record. Spoiler alert for later on. But <laughs> last week I was in a, I was in a situation where I needed to go meet my cousin, who was three towns away from where I was. Now I need, I had a doctor's appointment, so I needed to be at that appointment on time. Me being me, so I took a bus there. But then. I decided it was a genius idea. It was a nice day out. So I said, you know what? I'm going to walk to meet him three towns away. Oh, my gosh. Which, you know, I'll be honest with you. I never thought about how far is that anyway? Because you just got your headphones on. You just walk. You'll show up there eventually. And the way I looked at it is any stops along the way, would be like when you trucked across the street. So I'm not stupid. I'm not going to get wiped out by a car. So yeah. as I'm walking, I stop and wait to cross, and that's my break, and then I just keep on walking. And eventually I got there. It was like maybe, I think it took me 30 minutes to walk three towns away. That's pretty oh, fast wow. for considering. But I'm tall. Yeah. I got long legs. <laughs> 
But that's also, and I didn't get, and I wasn't winded, and I didn't gasp for air. In fact, I think I recorded some live from when I was doing that to prove that even, you know, a lot of people have this belief that my size is, you know, obviously I can't be as athletic as I once was. I still have my endurance, and it doesn't stop me from getting to point A to point B. I wasn't gasping for air because I know how to walk properly, that I know how to control my air. In fact, I was singing on my way to the three. I think we talked about this before. One of my favorite exercises to help with my endurance and my breathing is while I'm walking, I will sing in various different songs because when you're singing, and depending on if you're going up and down hills and so forth, like that's one of the best workouts you can do for your breathe. Not everyone can do it. Yep. I don't suggest people with asthma to do it. But it is very helpful. It does help with your endurance and so forth. But anyway. Very true. To sum that story up, I basically decided that since I didn't have enough money to own a car at 16 myself, but I could save what someone's life if I was in this situation. That I could. And, you know, one of the things we'll get into as far as mental health goes is... You know, the things that kind of lead to those things. And I literally watched one of my very close friends die because he was shot <laughs> in front of me oh. at 13. And I was 13. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's, it's all about our journeys and how we get there. But yeah. because I was 13 and I only knew what I knew from watching television, all I knew is call 911. Well, they put us on hold on Halloween night. Oh, my gosh. What do you do? Wow. Well, ended up, I didn't know what to do in that situation because as invincible as we were at 13, as tough as we thought we were, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, physically, yeah, no one was going to mess with us. We were doing the right things and we had goodwill. We were, you know, there at a party to make sure everyone was safe and whatever. And someone who had recognized my friend, and we didn't live in, I want to let you know that we didn't live necessarily in a bad area. It was kind of a money area that this happened in, a money area being somewhere that is kind of wealthy in that sense. I'm sure you're familiar. No matter where you go, in any sure. state, any area, there's always the poor section, the medium section, and then the expensive section. Well, this area was considered to be a yeah. money section. We were from the medial side at 13, and we thought we were doing the right thing. My friend got shot. Because we helped save people, you know, back that summer. We don't control these things. These are just the things that make us who we are. And I still remember this, yeah. right? But then, you know, years later, when I'm given this opportunity, what do I do? Do I get my driver's license or do I learn how to save someone's life properly? Because if I had that knowledge, I probably oh. could have saved my friend at 13. Because I wasn't planning on that. <laughs> We never planned on those things, but it happened. And what happens if I'm ever in the situation that that or anything else would ever happen? Knock on wood, it hasn't happened to that extent since then. But it was because of that training at 16, I decided to get my driver. I decided not to get my driver's license, but to become certified in American Red Cross in first aid and CPR. Because then I said, well, at least then I know I can save someone. So while they, my friends are driving, if they get into an accident, I don't know how to save them if that happens. So that was my first point. But the freedom thing I absolutely understand with because you need independence sometimes. And all honestly, I wouldn't get my driver's license until I was, get ready for this. Actually, let's see. Jaden, how old do you think I was when you think I got my driver's license? Oh, gosh. Let's um... guess. Put me on the spot. Uh, I know, right? This is I'll fun. Say, Interactions. I'll just guess 18. 18. I guess that. Okay. 18, by the way, I moved into my first apartment, by the way, at 18. Anna graduated high school, started wrestling school, just beat cancer for the first time at 18 years old. But anyway, Anna got my black belt in karate. And, and all, all of my martial arts got a black belt finally. Got to include everything. <laughs> so at 18, that was 18. I did not unfortunately get my driver's license, however, because I was too busy doing everything else I just mentioned. <laughs> however, for those people out there who are yelling at their monitor right now and who are saying, oh, he was definitely, he was definitely 30 years old, you would be correct. Oh my gosh. Wow. And why did I wait for so long? Well, for one thing, again, I lived in the city. Um, mm -hmm. I know how to get 
pretty much anywhere by bus, train, doesn't matter even what state or town or anything else. Um, because I lived yeah. in a town where we, we from, in an area we're so prominent on those things, I can adapt to anyone's public transportation. But because I can walk everywhere, I can adapt to those things. However, I honestly would, and as you probably could imagine, I got the flack from everybody. Well, you know, I would get the jet, you know, the jabs from people. Well, you don't have your license yet, do you? You have all these college <laughs> degrees. You can do all these other things. You can wrestle and these things, but you can't drive a car. I said, no, I can drive a car, just not legally or anything else, and I won't do so. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I'm boring, I guess, in that sense. Um, but mm-hmm. so in all honesty, I mean, yeah. maybe it would have been better for me to get my license sooner. So when I was driving with the other wrestlers and other people like that, maybe some of them would be alive today uh, because not everyone makes those decisions. Dang. Yeah. But the moral of that whole thing is we take those moments in learning how to get better and we take those moments to learn from and how to improve ourselves. So at 16, when I was given the opportunity to save a life or learn how to drive, I chose to save other people's lives over driving because I chose the masses over me. <laughs> now, since then, I have not had to help someone who got shot. However... I've had to help people who were choking several times. And also in 2013, I don't know if you heard, there was an issue in my city. And it was my training and things that I am known with that I ran in to help those who were affected in a certain attack on my city. <laughs> in 2013, I don't know if you're familiar. I don't know if you guys heard about that down there and where you are. Um, it was a pretty well-known incident that happened in Boston, um, and I was working at a day program, and I was a block away from where it went, where the explosions went off. And instead wow. of running away and whatever else, after I made sure the people we were working with, making sure they were safe, I ran to help the others who were affected, because my training gave me that ability. Um, that I can help people who are, uh, it was not a pleasant sight, <laughs> Yeah, but definitely not. when they say Boston strong, that's kind of where that comes from. And I was at the <laughs> middle of all that. That's not the point. Wow. But at 30, but at 30 years old, I was tired of hearing everyone doubt me because that's when it started happening. People were starting to doubt that I could do it. And they were starting to think that I couldn't do, I couldn't drive a car and I can't do this and the other thing. In all honesty, um, I knew my wrestling career wasn't going to go on forever. (laughs) My body was just starting to, you know, not like the fact that in a ring, in the middle of competing, no one can, I I mean, I can't feel anything. I'm I'm the adrenaline, which I'm sure you who have, you know, your workout and stuff like that, you're probably familiar. Sometimes you get so amped up with a workout or something you're doing that you don't even realize you might get a scratch or a nick. How did that happen? Well, because <laughs> while you're working out or doing something, you're so intense on doing it, your adrenaline's rushing, you don't feel anything. In all honesty, that's kind of what it's like to compete in a wrestling ring. In front of X amount of people, that's kind of what you feel. That adrenaline goes. It's like any other sport. When you get yeah, to box, when you get to box, you'll feel the same thing. You'll be hit several times in boxing. No, normally, if someone walks up and cold clocks you, you're going to like, oh. But when you're in a boxing match, you know you're going to get hit. You prepare for those things. And you don't really feel the pain as much as you think you would. Because the crowd gets in your blood. The yeah. crowd gets in your, in your thing. They're cheering you on. And, or they're booing you. One or the other. Whatever your goal is. If you're, I mean, a boxing kind of is different than the wrestling world. But. That's kind of what gets you going. That's honestly what kept me going yeah. in wrestling for so long, is that an adrenaline rush that I, I would get. I definitely understand that. Uh, I, there's, I fought, um, I've been fine like, competitively, but I fought my, uh, one of my best friends, Connor, a few years ago. <laughs> and neither of us at the time knew how to box. And oh. uh, I just remember, like, we, I, I got like a good hit. And I was like, how in the world is he still standing? But it's like the adrenaline rush. Uh, even though there wasn't a crowd, there was like, you know, three people maybe <laughs> three in the middle people. of this park and this field, uh, folks right there. It's, but it, yeah, even with that small crowd, it was like, it's still, 
gives you a weird feeling like you don't feel the pain at all you just feel like okay i gotta yeah make sure i don't feel that you know yeah you, know, you don't feel it you don't feel it at the moment the next day you'll feel it <laughs> mm-hmm. oh what did Very i do true. last night what was i doing well eventually my body was starting to not like it so much and also i found out about um you know i started doing more meet and greets with fans doing conventions so I was starting to meet fans and stuff, and I didn't like to have to depend on everyone to get me to those places, and some of them aren't necessarily on a bus line. So to silence the critics and to put all of the bed to rest, I said, fine, fine, I'll go get my driver's license, I'll get my this, that, and the other thing, and I'll go drive. (laughs) And they're like, oh yeah, I know, we've been hearing this for years, you're not gonna, and I did. At 30 years old, I got my driver's license. (laughs) Now, for the record... I got to tell you this story before us. I did attempt earlier than that to get my driver's license because I was 21 and I originally started to. And I went through driver's ed, passed it with no problem. And fortunately, I found a driver's ed program that wasn't good. (laughs) Wasn't good in the sense that I went to this driver's ed program and I could do all of the fundamentals of driving. I knew all of the book stuff, no problem. Book stuff comes naturally to me anyway. But as far as operating a car, I could do it except for one thing, and that was parallel park, because they never taught me how to parallel park. Now, i got to tell you this story because this is something that kind of plagued me for a while, which is why I waited for so long to go back and get my license. The driver's company, I paid them. Because remember, I was on my own. I didn't have someone's car that I could use to drive me around, and Everyone who said, oh, yeah, you know, why don't you go to driver's ed? Get your learner's permit. I'll take you driving. No one of those people could be found because I heard those things from everybody around me. My aunt, my uncles, my brothers. Oh, yeah, get your permit. I'll take you driving. No one could be found. I went to a driver's ed. And I paid them a good amount of money to teach me how to drive. And one of the things I did the day of my, tra- my, le- my driver's lessons it was two things. One, I had one friend. That's not true. I had one friend who took me driving the night before my test. And he knew kind of, he would take me driving once a blue moon around like a parking lot kind of an area or things like that. So I, you know, he was helpful in that sense. And the night before my road test, um, you know, we went through the whole thing. And the only thing he didn't feel comfortable showing me is how to parallel park because I went to that driver's program for one year, which is tenderly how are you supposed to do it? Six, six, three and three and then six. So six driving hours, six you know class hours. You got to pass everything, and then you can you know you have to space them out. And when it came time for me to get my driver's permit or my driver's license, rather, have my permit, I um, you know went and paid them for a forty-five minute warm up prior to my test. So that way, there any kinks that I would have, I could fine tune them. So when my friend took me out the night before. He told me that the only thing he could teach me is how to parallel park. The driving program, the year I went with them, never showed me once how to parallel park. And I never saw. I mean, if I'm not shown how to do it, I could, you know, I could have done it if they showed me. Um, Mm. But they never showed me how to parallel park. Which, by the way, you should learn how to parallel park. But here, here's, here's the fun part. This is kind of the annoyance piece for me. Around that time, other friends of mine who were also going to get their permit or their license, and people prior to me would go get their road test, parallel parking wasn't at that point something that was mandatory. Let's put it that way. So it was kind of depending on the mood of the person giving you the test, if they had you do parallel parking or not, how busy they were, in what kind of a rush they were in. Clearly, you should know how to parallel park. That is something that most people should know how to do. But back then, it wasn't necessarily a a necessity you needed to learn at that point. Or something they did on the test, I should say. Not something you needed to learn, but something they did on the test. Now it would probably be mandatory. But... Went for my road at 45 minute warm up. My friend said, Listen, you're good on everything. You can do the three point turns. You can drive no problem. You can park like a champ. And I am still good at parking to this day. Back, front, doesn't matter. But now I can parallel park too, so I can do all of the above. But driving is never an issue. In fact, I've never had an accident, never had a ticket, never been pulled over. 
well, no, I had one accident, and it was nothing to do with me. It was, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear that funny story about how uh, the corner for the town that I was visiting in hit had slid into on a on a snowy day. The wood they hit the black ice and f- f- slammed into my little car, which was not going to have a chance against um, a van oh, wow. the size of the corner <laughs> for the town. Oh, wow. But anyway, that was the one time, and I wasn't at fault, so it was nothing to do with me. But in all my years driving, I've never had that issue. Um, I've been driving since I was 30. <laughs> but I could have done it sooner. But here was I. I was 21. I was about to go get my, my, my license, as I thought. Because the, my friend said, all you have to do is learn how to parallel park, and you're good to go. When they come to give you your 45-minute warm-up, just have them show you that, and that's all you need to learn. Okay, cool. Because it doesn't take me long to learn how to do something. But the, the, this is my, I kid you not, and this is a kind of a lesson to the wise, so to speak. So, I pay, so my 45 minute, he got in the car, the guy who took me. Um, and I said, listen, uh, I'm pretty good on everything, as you probably already know. And as it's been reported, the only thing I've never learned how to do is parallel park. And I need to learn how to do that before I go for my test today which is in 45 minutes, remember. He goes, oh, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, he said. We'll get to that. My 45-minute warm-up was me driving him to his house, which wasn't terribly far away from where we were, him sitting in his house using the bathroom, apparently. And then when he got back in the car, okay, show me the three-point turn, no problem. Show me how to parallel. Show me how to three-point turn, okay. Obviously, I drove him to his house, so he knows I can do all that, the left, right, and all of the hand signals, all the things that go along with that. But the last thing he said, okay, now show me how to parallel park. Now I had five minutes to get to my my road test. Five minutes to get to my road test. And he asked me, okay, now show me how to parallel park. And remember, I told him when he got in the car, I don't know how to parallel park. He never showed me how. Well, he said, okay, well, let's attempt it. He goes, okay, well, we can't do this today. We can't take you up there today because if you go up there and fail, it's going to be on our school. I said, I told you when you got in the car 45 minutes ago that I couldn't parallel park. (laughs) And you told me that we would get to it, and I didn't know you were going to be in your house for 30 minutes of my 45-minute (laughs) warm-up. So... That kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Now, granted, you know, this is before the Karen days of a, of a thing. But I'm also not going to be a fool either. I'm not going to be taken advantage of. I'm not going to have someone think that they're going to get one over on me because I'm, you know, so young or unaware yeah. of things. Because, again, I might not be the sharpest knife in the, you know, the toolbox when it comes to cars. But I know what common sense is. And I know that I would have probably passed my test if they took me up there that day. And the moral of the story is I told them I would much rather go up there and try to do the test. Cause I remember at that point they didn't necessarily do the parallel parking thing. I would rather go up there and fail than not go up there and try at all because that's a, a wasted a moment. Well, yeah. he refused to take me up there <laughs> because he didn't show me how to parallel park. So I got my money back by the way, from the driver's ed company for not providing the service that they offered. Um, I did obviously pass my classes, but in because of that bad taste that I learned, I honestly didn't go back and do my test again until years later. But I already knew the one thing that I needed to learn, and that was Parallel Parallel Park. I was confident on everything else except for Parallel Park. I never learned. What's funny is the reason I'm telling you this is because what I learned about driving is something I didn't expect. Is sometimes when you're driving, it kind of opens you up to things you may be afraid of that you didn't expect to do before. You might learn something new about yourself and how you handle things than you would when you're just walking around or whatever the case may be. Reason I say this is when I was growing up, there was a bad, there was a bad area in our area where I lived that was called Five Corners. It was known to be one of the most problematic places for drivers because a lot of accidents happened there. And they only put lights in there not long ago. 
So it was very dangerous. In my mother's days, when my mother was driving through those areas, it was a bad area because there was no lights there. It was kind of like you had to follow the etiquette for everything before you could get your driver's <laughs> before you could go. It was, it was a nightmare. And I used to say, I'm never driving through this area ever. And remember the one thing I needed to learn is how to parallel park, right? Mm-hmm. Well, when I got sick and tired of counting on other people to get me from point A to point B, or when I learned that when these, when I wanted to do more of these open things where I wanted to go to conventions or when my, when I started, you know, getting serious about settling down with my wife and my kids, I learned that I need in order to do those things, I need to get over myself and drive. So the first day back with this new driver's ed program, we went through that nasty intersection that I said I would never go in. That was my first thing with this company. So the first thing is they made me go through that nasty intersection that I said I would never go through. And now whenever I go to that area, I I don't even bat an eyelash at it. The other thing was they took me out. They told, they showed me how to parallel park in maybe 25 minutes in my first lesson with not lesson, but they called a refresher course because I was getting ready to go back and get my license. So I didn't necessarily need a full course because I already passed driver's ed. I just needed to get the fundamentals of driving and also get a sponsorship from the driver's ed company. Because remember, I don't have anyone who's going to sponsor me for that. Even at 30, I need to use a company to do that. So moral of the story is you learn how to cope with those things and you overcome. I have no issues now with that intersection. I have no issues with any driving. I can parallel park like a champ. I can park in champ in, in general. But these are the things you'll encounter when you're driving is one thing is you have to learn that it's your time, not theirs. What I mean by that is making your priority as a driver is to get yourself and the people you're with where you need to be safely, not Joe Schmo behind you. (laughs) If Joe Schmo behind you needed to be where he needed to be and he's beeping his horn, acting like the fool because he didn't leave on time, that's not your problem. That's his. Mm, so your priority sense. as a driver is to make sure you get to where you need to be in one piece, safe and sound, on time. I, 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 can, I think you're probably, a, I don't know, I, I feel like you're a punctual individual. I, I could be wrong. I have not encountered that. I've never tried. Here, you were here on time here, so I guess it can't be too far from it. <laughs> uh, would you consider yourself to be a punctual person or are you someone who is known to be kind of late? <laughs> uh, could you define punctual just so I punctual, understand what you're saying? Sure. Punctual Probably. is being on time. Uh, never being late. Generally, you're, you have a reputation for being dependable to be on time. You're not late ever. You don't. No one has to worry about you being somewhere 20 minutes late or an hour late for something. You're generally... Yeah. If someone says, be such and such a place at 10 o'clock, generally someone who's punctual is going to be there either, if not at 10 o'clock on the dot, at the latest, is usually there maybe 5 to 10 minutes, 20 minutes early, maybe, at the least. That's a punctual individual. Late, someone who's late is someone who is constantly someone you know well. You know, so and so is coming. You know, if I say four o'clock, they're really going to be here at four thirty. That's someone who's opposite <laughs> of punctual. Now, does that make it? Does that make sense? Yeah, I just want to make sure I fully understood before sure. I yeah, no worries. Uh, answered. But yeah, I'd say for the most part, I'm pretty on time most most things. Uh, yeah, it changes a little bit, but. Yeah, with everything, especially if it's important and for business, then, yeah, I'm always on time. And also, if it's something... Now, remember, when you're driving, you have control of that. That's the important thing to realize. Mm-hmm. You have control. And that's some, that's a feeling that a lot of people don't understand, is the... Which you clearly... It sounds like you do understand the independence factor. In fact, that's one of the things you said that sells you on driving, is the independence In all honesty, it's one of my favorite places to brainstorm, to prepare myself. I do meditation while I'm driving because I don't know how people don't understand how meditation works. But meditation comes in many, many ways and many ways to do meditation. 
um, and to me, it's a word of clarity and gets me ready for my day. I don't, th- I never worry about driving. Driving is one of my favorite things to do now. I also enjoy walking, but obviously I'll get there a lot quicker if I drive. And if I have option to drive, I probably will. But it's all about knowing yourself, your ability and being confident in yourself and also knowing the responsibility at your hands because it's a lot of responsibility. So that's that part. Yeah. So that is my story. And my first car was a car was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice, a, nice. a friend of mine told me it was 15 it was it was 1500 dollars, so $1,500. I had more money than that to spend on the car. Uh, and people had advised me not to necessarily jump at the first thing. One of the things that they told me prior, and one of the things I'm going to also tell you also, is make sure your first car should not be something epic anyway. Your first car really yeah. should be something to learn on, as they say, or beat on, as they told me. But here's something that I, I'm going to give you a tip that I, I was not aware of, because remember, I don't know much about cars. Um, <laughs> when looking at a car, bring someone who does know about cars with you to help look at the car. Oh my gosh, yeah. That makes sense. When you're looking at, like, especially with these, like, private things, you talk about Facebook Marketplace. I actually got a car on my Facebook Marketplace, and it was okay. My first car was a Jeep Cherokee. It was older. And the reason being is because I looked at it. It was four-wheel drive. I lived in an area that needs four-wheel drive. And it was an SUV, which I also like bigger cars because I'm a tall guy, and you need to be able to fit comfortably in a car. I don't fit in little cars that have to hit my head getting in the car because I'm tall. (laughs) So that's one of the downfalls of that. But with the Jeep, I did. But I went against, you know, what everyone suggested, and I went and got this car because I don't know anything about cars. Uh, My brothers were mechanics, and I lucked out because my brothers are mechanics, actually. Um, I got this Jeep, and again, my friend said, oh, she might, you know... a friend of my, a supposed friend of mine recommended this car who was a friend of hers who owned the car. Oh, she took care of that car like it was one of her own kids. And knowing that I'm the protectional father that I am, she knew that was a way to sell it to me. That, the fact that I <laughs> put so much faith in my own kids, I, I would believe that her, she would take care of her kids the same way. Well, I get this car. It was 1500 So I was saving money. You know, I had more money than that to spend. And I was going to go to a dealer and spend a lot more money on something. But, I mean, $1,500, I'm a money-conscious person. If I'm going to get a good deal and I'm just going to learn on it anyway, I can just use that, use some more of the money to pay off the insurance for the whole year, which I do recommend you do, and then um, you know, go from there. Not have to worry about it. Use all the excess money to just make sure the car is yeah. awesome. That's what I did. And found out... That uh, So I didn't know anything about the cars, but the guy who was holding the car said, you might want to watch out for the struts. Uh, it might not pass inspection is what he said. You got to get the struts fixed first. And I said to him, what is a strut, <laughs> first of all? Uh, and then I had to call my brothers and say, hey, the guy says I need to fix the strut before I can get it. Um, you know, in order to drive a car on the road, it has to pass inspection. I don't know how it is down where you are, but up here it has to pass inspection in order to get a sticker to which you can drive it on the code legally and not have to worry about someone pulling you over or whatnot. Basically, it just means that your car is not going to die in the middle of the road and cause an accident to yourself or others. But anyway, I get the car and we take it. My brother had me bring it to his garage where he has his friend who owns the garage. And the guy said, yeah, it's going to fail but what I'm going to do, because they give you so long to fix whatever it is to, you know, whatever. So basically, he told me that my brother had to basically rebuild the, the quote, rust underneath my car. Oh my rust gosh. underneath my car. I said, oh, okay, rust underneath the car. I mean, I know what rust is. I'm not thinking anything too much of it. Apparently, by the way, Jeeps are known for this. <laughs> I didn't know that either. But anyway... So I had X amount of time to fix it, and my brother said they would fix it, you know, maybe you know, about a month from then. And I still had a few months to get it re- refixed. 
So, so I drive, you know, I drove people around. My cousins were in my car. Other people, my friends were in my car. I was in my car, obviously, getting back and forth to work. You know, it was a good time. I knew I had to get it fixed, but my brother was going to fix it. No big deal. I get it to my brother's house. In order to fix, you know, the car and to get it at the bottom of it, he had to pull the floor mat up. He pulls the floor mat up, and there was absolutely no floor whatsoever underneath the carpet. Oh, my gosh. Underneath the driver's seat or the passenger's. If there was wow. no carpet there, it would have been a Fred Flintstone car. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is not going to work. And my brother went, my brother lost his mind. He was not happy. But he fixed it. He he did the floor for me and all those things. And that car, which is the first car, which everyone talks about their first car because it's the car that no car you'll own after that will ever be as defined as that one. Yeah, this car was had no floor on it, but we rebuilt the floor. It did pass finally. But... And it couldn't go over 55 miles on the highway without convulsing. So when driving on the highway, it couldn't go over 55 miles on the highway because it would just shake and clutter everywhere. But needless to say, we had to take that Jeep all the way down to Jersey and back. And he got us there. Granted, we had to drive in this ultra slow lane going under 55 on the highway. So it took a little longer than it normally would if you drove a regular car, but oh my gosh! <laughs> moral of the story yeah. is you learn from those experiences. And <clears throat> we wish you well, by the way. Good luck. Do you already have your permit? Uh, can you repeat that? Oh, sorry. I was drinking my tea. Sorry. Do you, do you already have your permit? Uh, no, you have to get it. You have, at least not here. You have to uh, go through the driver's ed first before you can... Uh, get your permit, but oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So that's interesting. I guess that's a new way to do it. <laughs> yeah, up here, uh, my son. Uh, <laughs> so another cool thing. I, I I bet your dad could have done this with you. You're pretty smart too. You probably would have done this. But I, then again, if, depending on your area, if that's how they do it down there, you wouldn't be able to do it. But up here, it's not necessarily the case. You just need to you have to purse the you have to get your permit in order to go to driver's ed, because I mean you can go to driver's ed and they'll help you, but you really can't do the driver's hours if you can't get your permit. I mean, yeah. you get your permit, you gotta. That's one of the reasons why up here you're supposed to have your permit and then get your driver's ed, because that's going to help you. But then when you get your license, you get a discount on your insurance, which is why everyone does the the um, goes through the driver's ed. For the, the insurance uh, break they give you. And they do give you a pretty good break. But anyway, um, my son, on the other hand, who is someone who is very observant. He's a, he's a you know, when I'm driving, I would point things out to him as I'm driving. Because he likes to be a sponge and I like to tell people things. So as I'm pointing out the different signs or the various different rules of the road as I'm driving. Because I've never had an accident, as I mentioned. I don't, I don't really get panicked behind the wheel. I know I have control over my aspect of it. One of the things you learn is um, being able to figure out what other people are going to do before they do it, which is actually what the guy who gave me my road test said. The guy who gave the second one, not the first one who was a lunatic who wanted to use the bathroom, apparently. (laughs) The one who actually got me my, took me for my road test and actually got me my license, he said that I had a really good way of kind of figuring out what was going to happen before it would happen, which is something you have to be an observant driver. So you you don't look at the car in front of you. You look seven miles in front of you is how driving works. Um, and I was good at assessing that. And one of the tips that my brothers gave me, which I'm also going to give you, is whenever you have the ability to be, you know, give yourself some room between the, yourself and the car in front of you, I do suggest you do so. Um, stay back a good maybe six feet from the car in front of you, maybe 10 feet. Even if you're like on a small road, try to stay back as far away as possible from the car in front of you. The reason being isn't because of something you're going to do, but you don't know what they're going to do. In all honesty, if you have that distance ahead of yourself, it gives you the ability to act quickly to fix the situation and assess things before anything can get bad. So in other words, if you're right on top of the person right behind them, and they slam in their brakes for no apparent reason. They drop their coffee cup. And they slam in their yeah. brakes out of nowhere. And you're right behind them. 
because you're going at whatever speed, you could hit them and risk getting yourself an accident. Mm -hmm. But giving yourself yeah. at least a you know five, ten feet gap between yourself and the car in front of you gives you the ability to maneuver away from that situation and do something different. That's one tip I can give you that has helped me because I do that when I drive. I stay far away from everyone in front of me. That's one. The other is learn how to make fun with the traffic and instead of getting all huffy and puffy with everything on the road because it's very easy to be annoyed by others because they're not going to be as educated or as well trained as you are. I learned my first day driving the new car as we dubbed the f -Roll Express. Go figure. <laughs> the first one, f -Roll Express 1, the original. <clears throat> I found out that even though I had been driving a short amount of time, people, even though people have been driving longer than me, doesn't necessarily mean there are better drivers than me. Um, and you will encounter things you don't expect, like people who don't know the difference between the right and turn left, right, and that will cause issues. So be aware of other people is what I'm going to tell you. And the other thing is don't necessarily think because someone's been driving a long time on the road that they are so much more advanced than you have because you're a smart young man. So I think you'll adapt to driving very easily. Uh, but I can also tell you that you got to be careful of getting annoyed over the people who don't have that common sense that people just lack when they drive. Yeah. For example, makes... people forget how to drive in the rain, drive in the snow. It might snow and rain all the time, but people forget how to do so. Like, Oh no, what is this stuff? It doesn't change anything. You slow your speed down, you drive like you normally would. It's not rocket science. But one of the things I learned is just learning how to just kind of go with the flow. Don't, don't panic. Don't stress. Because honestly, driving is one of my zen moments. I feel most comfortable in a car. Gives me time to think. Gives me time to process. Gives me time to prepare for something. Um, yeah. one, you know, and all those things. So that's something I can tell you also where you're going to be doing speaking engagements when you're doing your um when you're doing business practices and you're doing your door-to-door -door sales which by the way i understand that point too trying to cold cold call people you don't know and go up to complete strangers to try to get them to buy things <laughs> is intimidating and scary um and also depending on who it is much like that first gentleman you encountered uh, generally speaking that can put the scare into people but good for you can continue in that because I think you can even protest that people get over that after a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, definitely. There's that. So that was my story about driving. Hopefully it's helped you, at least made you laugh a little bit, and also prepares you for what you're encountering. So, Jaden. Yeah, thank you for the tips. Yeah, no worries, man. I want to make sure you're safe out there. We need to have Jaden around. We don't need him to driving the car and driving himself mad or the people around him driving him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of crazy, no, no pun intended, it was horrible anyway. Now we're going to be talking about <laughs> as of, awful of a transition as that is. So going back to the original topic of mental health, that's horrible. I'm so sorry. Anyway, <clears throat> talking about mental health, uh, Jaden, from your perspective as a young person, in my day, as I mentioned, we didn't talk about mental health a lot. These days, people seem to be able to talk about whatever they want, for the most part. Everyone has their opinions on certain things. And it, it, it's kind of nice to hear that so many people are so open to talk about mental health and mental awareness. This is May. And uh, as much as I would have liked to have talked about it more this month, um, you know, unfortunately, as we know, I was tied up with other things that kept me from that. Now I'm here and yeah. able to focus. Thank you, by the way, for that as well, Jaden. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, um, from your perspective, from a young person's point of view, explain to me what your understanding of mental health is and how vital it is to getting around today. Is it something that you think people are aware of, should be aware of, or is it something that people put too much hype into? I think it's definitely something people should be aware of. I think also a lot of people don't really understand what it is, though. Most people just aim to become happier, when in reality, you know, you're not always going to be happy, so you can't rely on being joyful and happy. So I think real mental health comes from being able to realize that you're not in a good situation, that you're not feeling 
that you're not feeling uh, happy or joyful or not feeling motivated, not feeling any anything like that. And being able to look at yourself with emotional control and self-control and just say, hey, we need to, or this is how I can get out of this, or this is how, this is what I need to do, this is what needs to happen. Because uh, sitting around, you know, whining about it doesn't help versus, you know, actually taking action. So I think that's what, that's a big mis- misconception for mental health is just always aiming. Oh, sorry. It's all good. Uh, notification popped up. But uh, <laughs> I think that's a big misconception is people just always aim to be happy and always aim to be, you know, not feeling they're not okay with not being, not feeling okay, if that makes sense. Sure. But yeah, that, that's at least my personal opinion. To me, it makes sense. I mean, to other people maybe who don't go through it, maybe not so much. Um, mm-hmm. What impact has mental health done f- specifically for you personally? Like, what have you seen with mental health, and how do you? What would you say your view of it? Is? And uh, granted, I know how your point of view on that is, but what is your? You know, what is something that you can say that you have encountered as far as the mental health world, if you, if any? Do you know what I mean? Uh. You mean yeah, to clarify? Could you just, like elaborate a little bit. Sure. So, uh, I love the, I love the, the words, man. He uses my words. <laughs> elaborate. Thank you. You're welcome. So, what I mean by what? So, you're talking in a general sense what mental health does for everyone else in the world. For you specifically, mm-hmm. what it, what would you say? How would mental health impact you specifically versus everyone else in the world? Mm. Because we all have those moments, I get that, and you know yeah. it is what it is. So, for you specifically, what is it about mental health for you that affects you? That affects me. Um, like what affects me in a positive manner, or a- either way, like what? It, like, in other words, how did you get to know what mental health was? Because some people don't even know oh, what that is. Okay. How did you learn what mental health was, and how did you get to understand what it was that, in your own personal experience versus let me write, you know, what anywhere else in the world specifically? I think I probably started becoming more aware of what it was around when I was maybe 12, 13, because uh, that's right around the time it started to become more talked about, more ubiquitous, and more popularized almost uh so i just started like seeing all sorts of videos like oh this is how you improve uh mental health is how you improve you know your mood whatever and so from then you know i just started finding out okay this is false information this is true and started studying based relating my own experiences towards what other people were teaching and that's that's how I found out about it, and that's basically how I do it. I just look at what experiences others are having, what they're teaching, and then relate it to what I'm experiencing and see if it uh, resonates, see if it resonates, and works for my situation, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, interesting. So, um, mental health. So... You mentioned how you how it makes you feel. Um, do what do you do you feel that mental health? Do you know someone personally that you know is struggling with mental health or has mental health issues that you can say, yeah, this person has mental health? Um, I think, like I said earlier, I think we all go through you know ups and downs. Sure. So, uh, sure. You know, like. So basically, you know, everyone struggles with it to an extent, at least most people. See, Jaden's smart because he... Some... Yep. Go ahead, continue. Oh, finish sorry. your thing. No, finish your statement. I'm, I'm about to say why you're smart and why that's a very good point. <laughs> Go ahead, finish your say. Uh, but yeah, so I think to an extent, uh, most people, the majority of people struggle with it and other people just deal with it in different ways, you know. Sure. Someone who has... Because some people may have more equanimity than others, versus someone who doesn't have any emotional control or uh, self awareness could not handle it as well as someone who 
understands what they're feeling and how to deal with it. So that's a big part of the reason why, you know, parenting possibilities, we all, we teach more about uh, self-discipline, self-control, and dealing with things that, uh, you know, no one wants to deal with, but it's just part of life, you know, so. Which is a great program, by the way, I do recommend people who want to learn the best ways <laughs> to deal with it. Parent, that one, Probably one of the best programs out there for people. I've actually seen people attempt Thank to you. do it, but then giving the credit other places. I don't know how that happens, but anyway, <laughs> this is the guy who it starts with. These are the people who actually originated it. Sorry to break your bubble. Uh, Jaden has been <laughs> patenting that, that model for a little while now. Uh, so there's the spoiler alert on that. But what Jaden said is actually right. Um, you know, from my perspective, again, I have a human services degree, but also I have a degree in life, as we used to say in college. Um, so, you know, there's two kinds of, you know, PhD, it's two types of degrees, right? There's two kinds of people who are in the mental health world, people who decide to get in. There's the ones who are what they call book smart, or know everything they learn from a book. This is how, this is what mental health is, this is how it affects, but they've never actually encountered any of those things themselves. That's what we mean by someone who gets a degree versus, you know, in the myth, who gets a degree in book smarts. But then there are those who have lived through it, who have seen mental health impact people. And we call that exactly. a PhD in life. So I have a college degree in human services degree. True. I have a PhD in life. <laughs> and I've worked in the human services field because of my degree, but also because of my experience, which helps a long time and goes a lot further than it does for someone who just learns what the terms mean versus someone who knows can feel what those things mean. Does that make sense? Exactly. hundred percent. And there was a paper that I had to write and we talked about my writing ability and the things I like to write. I had to write a paper in college in my human services degree about how basically you could take anyone, you could sit down on a bench, watch 10 people walk by you could die just watching them. You could diagnose every single one of those people with a quote mental illness, believe it or not. Any 10 people walking down the street, you could diagnose anyone you see walking down the street because you're just putting a label on someone. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that's how that person is. That's your perspective. In all honesty, that's kind of how their psychiatry works in a lot of ways, is they look at what the person's doing. And they say, well, you have such and such, and this is kind of what you yeah. have, and this is what matches up to that. My, you know, the way I got into this whole world is because I was experiencing it at a young age. I lived in a very tur turbulent life, as we've already gone over. Last night, you probably didn't hear about it because it was late last night when I did my show last night. But I actually talked about what I, I, you probably knew this. I, I don't, I don't have any bones about it and it's, it's May. So, um, I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Do you know what that is? A little bit, not fully. The short term of it is PTSD. Uh, most people mm -hmm. know that term versus post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder is, um, basically when you have encountered something so, so tragic, something so, um, you witness something that is so a memory. You have a moment that is so profound in your life that you relive those feelings, the anxiety, the fear, the sadness, the mm -hmm. anger yeah. over and over again. A long time. This has had many different other nicknames over the time, such as Vietnam syndrome, uh, soldier's nightmare, the silent, you know, the, the basically, a lot of people who believe who have this have post traumatic stress disorder are generally people who maybe have seen wartime, who have spent time in the military, mm -hmm. people who are first responders, doctors, doctors, police officers, firefighters, who witness things that are so profound that they embed themselves in their mind. Me, unfortunately, I was exposed to a very sad early life. But as I like to tell people, I ha I might have PTSD. I am not PTSD because 
it doesn't define who you are. It's just a piece of you. Kind of like, I have black hair. You have blonde hair. You're wearing a blue shirt. I'm wearing a blue shirt with a camo top, right? But in the long term, they're just ways to describe someone. It doesn't mean anything exactly. other than that. There's a lot more to Jaden having blonde hair and a blue shirt than just having blonde hair and a blue shirt. He's a brilliant young man. He's wearing a shirt that they helped design the company. That's the difference between looking and seeing. Me, I have had years of experience. And one of the things that I have, the reasons I have PTSD is that story I told you earlier. That is something that I have lived through. And that is something that kind of embeds in my head. Now, people who have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, there are many other things. There are what they call symptoms, such as insomnia. I am up late a lot still. I I don't sleep like everyone else, but also I am functional, even with that lack of sleep. I think we've talked about that before. But also, my moods can go up and down sometimes if I don't have control over myself. Now, what you said is absolutely correct. I might have post-traumatic stress disorder, but doesn't mean it needs to impact my life every single day. I don't have to feel sorry for myself because I had such a horrible life. That's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. I'm about making others helpful, helping others get so they don't have to worry about those things. Yep. And when I have done my public speakings, which I do a lot, and I talk to the students and they talk in front of a, an auditorium of 400 kids. You'd be surprised how many kids, when I ask them, do you know how many people, right or left, the person to the right or left of you, do you know what goes on behind their house, what goes on in their homes? Do you know what, how they live? You could have a rich person, and it doesn't matter what the school is, you could have a, a private school and have the same auditorium of 500 kids with the nicest homes. And they're still going to have struggling issues. You don't know what goes on in the homes. Exactly. Yep. There's an old saying you've probably heard, the grass is greener on the other side. Right? That's an old saying everyone has. <laughs> but when you really think about it is, yeah, that grass is greener on the other side, on the outside, first and foremost. You don't know what their house looks like on the inside. It might be a complete disaster. You don't know what their <laughs> house looks like just because their grass is green. So... <laughs> That's a deceiving kind of a notion to, you know, assume that just because someone has something, that's going to impact them. There, now, there are times there are people who have PTSD that it, it's profound, especially in people who have, you know, been through war times and things like that. Another thing that we, who have, you know, we experience is because of those memories, there we, we call triggers that can spark those memories. Because basically what it is, is you just relive the memory in your head. They don't leave your head. Yeah. And you relive those yeah. things as if you're right there in that moment. And a lot of people who have been to you know war and all these things, they relive those scenes over and over again. So let's say they're walking down the street and they might hear a backfire on a car. Like, have you ever gone down the street and a car will give it like a back thing where the <laughs> muffle will yeah. blow up? Well, that happens for you know someone like yourself. It doesn't bother you. It's just like, oh, it's a loud noise. This is horrible. But to that same person, that, that goes off. And they might have the worst encounter of their life. They might flip out altogether. Because now, with that going off, they're brought back to that time they were in Vietnam when the bombs were going off. And that's mm-hmm. that where they're scared. Yeah. All and they relive that. That's what post-traumatic stress disorder can be. But it doesn't define who a person is. Like any other mental illness. Depression is another part of that, too. It goes up and down the mood swings. But... <laughs> And it's not something you're born with, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not like there's other kinds of mental illnesses that are supposedly um, genetic. Like, um, uh, let's see, uh, some genetic mental illnesses consist of like bipolar, chronic depression. Again, I don't buy into the genetic piece of it because just because you might have something like that doesn't mean you have to feed into that. Does that make sense? Exactly. It doesn't mean you have to have these experiences. And you might have hard times. Everyone has depression. I mean, I don't know anyone who has these, this happy-go-lucky, perfect life. 
There are going to be exactly, moments that are going yeah. to be hard. There are going to be moments that are keeping you down. That no one's going to be happy every single day. It's a natural response to be unhappy sometimes. It's natural to be angry. It's natural to be sad. It's natural to be happy. Those are just Completely. human relations. And um, It's like that. Uh, I remember, I don't know when this was, like a few months ago or something, I posted on my story. It was like, it was a picture of a tweet I made, and it was something along the lines of like, Depress, feeling depressed is normal, but being depressed or being depressed or living depressed is a choice. I literally had like at least a hundred people message me, and were just like, "Bro, what is wrong with you? You're 15. You don't have any life." They were so mad, and these are people who have like supported me for you know, supported the page for years. So it was, it was interesting to see like so many people were just so upset, and I was like. And none of them could, like, finish the argument. I'd give my point, and they just, like, some would leave me on red, others would, like, the arguments would go nowhere because they don't have an argument against why it's not. And it's crazy to see, like, thinking in this, uh, this kind of a side tangent, but thinking in today's world is, like, in common sense is not common anymore. And yeah. Isn't that funny yeah. how that works? <laughs> it's crazy. You would but, think that they would be, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so many people got mad at me for that, <laughs> which I thought it was hilarious, but it's funny. Well, they're yeah. obviously not worth your time, Jaden, because you're that's a very intelligent thing and apparently people aren't as as witted with us as we are. Well, that's their loss, not yours. <laughs> oh, there you go. He disappears. Out of curiosity, that picture is that you and Connor boxing by the way? Oh, yeah, that is uh That's the epic boxing ago, so match. Is that the bo- Okay, uh, cool. Is yeah, this is this is this a thing anywhere that people can see? The fight? Yeah, probably not. Right? I think it's actually on his old YouTube channel. It's his brutal. old one. That's brutal. Um, <laughs> I think it's like titled "I Punched My Friend" or something. Oh boy! It was his most viewed video by far. Oh man! And it was just it's we were so bad at fighting, but so it's bad hilarious at to go back and watch. It's yeah, it's so funny. But we had a commentator who was literally just my my brother's friend who had held a stick for a microphone. <laughs> a stick. <laughs> wow. And um, he, he was like the first commentator. It, oh, everything about the fight was just horrible. <laughs> well. But it was, it's hilarious to look back on. But you but, live, you live those moments though. And, exactly, yeah. You know, what's funny is that you know that that's, a, you know that that was funny, you know that it was done in parody. I would probably understand the same thing. Um, Jazz Fitness, the character Jazz Fitness. I, a lot of people believe that Jazz Fitness is one of the same. Do you know the difference between a character and a person? Not a cur- you obviously do, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so if someone was to say, you know, who is, let's say, Ralph Macchio. Do you know who Ralph Macchio is first? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. All right, I'm trying to think of a celebrity you would know. Do you know who The Rock is? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, The Rock. Now, do you know the difference between The Rock and Dwayne Johnson? Uh, or do you think you would be able to know the difference between a rock performance and Dwayne Johnson? Uh, you know, there's definitely a difference. Like, uh, right. There's definitely a difference. Yeah. Right. yeah there's definitely got to be something. This goes back to that. This goes back to that common sense things we talked about earlier. You would mm-hmm. understand that, right? Yeah. So yeah. Jaden is just Jaden. Right, you don't. You're not trying to act like anybody else. You're just you, right? Yeah. Which is clear. That's that's what you do. That's what that's what it is. A wrestler or a performer of some kind, they have to take the life of a character and they have to be themselves. And there's a fine line, much like an actor or entertainer in music or whatever. Someone who's a musician, for example. They don't walk around singing all day either, right? I mean, how many rock stars... I mean, Eminem doesn't walk down the street and sit there and rap down to himself. I mean, come on. Yeah. But we all know that Eminem... You, per certainly, like Eminem. By the way, we're going to ask you about your music. By the way, mu- by the way, Jaden is starting to get into the music thing, too. He's starting to write music. I can't wait to hear the awesome work that Jaden's putting in on his rap album. Um, so I... I we hope we get the rap album first. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, you know, in other words, Eminem, 
in Marshall Mathers are two different things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Marshall Mathers is walking down the street and, you know, you know, rapping to himself. He does that on a yeah. stage. And the common sense factor would be people would know the difference between Eminem and the guy walking down the street who is Marshall Mathers. Me, Sean Jazz Stevens, is different than that of both Jazz Fitness and Jazz Vengeance. Completely different. Yeah. Is that, is that a safe, uh, have you seen the Jazz Fitness character out of curiosity, Mr. You know, I know you like the fitness world. And I know you are someone who takes fitness seriously, which is a good thing. Which, by the way, I do too. Spoiler alert. But have you seen the Jazz Fitness character out of curiosity? I think I actually have a little bit, yeah. I, I mean, I've, I so, I've sent some things. On, I mean, even the reason I've sold, there's a lot of clips out there anyway. Back in the early day, the fun fact about Jazz Fitness is, I, I, from one, number one, I didn't know what YouTube was in the early days of YouTube. Because I'm not necessarily a technical guy. When YouTube kind of started, way back when was when this company started, you know, doing promos on, promos is, by the way, talking. That's what, it's a wrestling term. <laughs> and when they wanted me to help this, because I basically signed on to help both the students learn how to talk, um, which is what they call cutting promos, and how to tell stories in the ring that people would understand and believe that would be tough people or whatnot, right? That's kind of how that works. But also, as my setup falls apart upon me, this is fun. <laughs> Technical difficulty. See, this is the purse of jazz fitness right here. I start talking about jazz fitness, everything falls apart. I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. That's okay. I overcome because I'm me. It's okay. Cool. I fixed it. Technical difficulties have been avoided. Thank you very much. I win. Anyway, so like I was saying, um, as people want to make fun of, like to watch, you know, the early days of Jazz Fitness ended up on YouTube. A lot of his promos ended up on there because he was a parody character. You know what a parody is, obviously. It's a joke, right? Yeah. Now, I'll be honest with you. The person who I am, I actually was insulted at first when they wanted me to be the character. And, I, and I've been very vocal about that. Like, I thought they were making fun of the things that I did prior to me being Jazz Fitness. Jazz Vengeance, who was my first character, who was who I was in high school, that wasn't a gimmick. That was A gimmick is, by the way, a wrestling character or storyline. That's a gimmick. But me, yeah. there's, the students in school called me Jazz. The students in, it was also the kids in high school who called me Jazz Vengeance. Because of the stories that I've told that are true. That I was the bully buster. I was the person who got, you know, had the 16 fights in one day that I'm not necessarily proud of. But these are the <laughs> things that kind of build your legacy. And, yeah. Which is why to this day most people either call, most people do call me Jazz or Jazz Vengeance or JV or something of that nature. Most people outside of, only people in my family immediately who call me Sean. But... You see, that's just who I am. I'm John, I'm Jazz, I'm all of those things. I'm Sean Jazz Stevens. But Jazz Fitness, you know, Jazz Vengeance, I was always in the gym. At th- I, I mean, I think I told you when I first started working out, I was like 13, because that was when the doctor said I could stop working out. Because I was skinny, I was scrawny, I was unhappy being this scrawny, short little kid. Even though I, I, was, on, I was competing in martial art tournaments at, since age five, right? And competing yeah. and training. I just had a really super metabolism that kicked in really quick, and I was a picky eater. I didn't eat a lot anyway as a kid. So I was skinny. You could see my ribs. I was gross. I'll be the first to admit. I mean, there would be no pictures of me or what they call selfies back then. That would be horrific. But because you could see my ribs, it was gross. And I looked into a mirror. I said, this is not who I'm going to be. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to get stronger. And I started lifting weights at 13. I was in the gym constantly. My school was lucky enough to have a gym room. I was always in the gym room. We called ourselves gym rats. Basically, we worked out until we got sick, and then we continued working out more because that's just what we do. We pump. We get it. We get, we get our workout in. Yeah. We get sick. We go back to working out again after we drink our water to get re- rehydrated. We do it again and again and again. So I was in great shape in high school, and then I was a tri-sporter also. So I. I was on the soccer team, which is, 
you know, to the world audience, football, to American audience, soccer. I was on the wrestling team in the winter. So I was a tri-sporter. I did soccer in the fall, wrestling in the winter, and uh, in the spring I was on the swim team. These are all three sports, by the way, very demanding in practices, by the way. And I probably didn't know that when I signed up, but because I was already doing martial arts in general, I was already disciplined enough to deal with all that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I was already in the gym anyway, so it just gave me more of it. So I was in great shape until I got injured in 2003 when I accomplished my first goal to become a pro wrestler. I got injured. I put in, I wasn't allowed to work out and do something that I loved doing. I loved working out. It was something about being able to press and being able to lift and being able to look and feel good about yourself. Yeah. I could deal with missing a tooth because that has a fun story too. Um, you know, that that's a quick match. You know, that was early. Getting my knee blown out, that was ridiculous, but I did it. I overcame it. <laughs> but, I mean, that's when I took that time to go to regular college and accrue college degrees while I was injured. And then I got back into wrestling. So, that's, so because I was so high up on Jazz Vengeance, who was the good guy, and he was someone who was in shape, I thought Jazz Fitness was kind of a shot at me, personally. I took it, I took it as offensive because you're saying yeah. I'm out of shape, but I'm not out of shape. I could still run a ropes, which is true. I could I, Athletically, I'm still deceiving everything. I'm very deceiving in, in appearance. I could run a ropes better than people. My endurance is better than most people. Most of the time when I'm playing basketball, people are usually gasping for and trying to get out of the basketball while playing <laughs> because I still want to play. Um, I have endurance, and I still have that drive. I don't know how old I am at that moment. And then that thing we talked about earlier, when the next day comes in, then I'll be reminded how old I am. <laughs> yeah. But in the moment, we don't feel those things. <clears throat> So I thought it was a joke, Jazz Fitness. The unfit fitness guru, <clears throat> you're making fun of me. You're telling me to go out there and pretend I can't be good at sports. I'm good at sports. <clears throat> People aren't going to believe this. Excuse me one second. Uh, just but, a quick yeah, heads up. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, my phone sound like is pretty low, so just heads up. I don't know how much longer I'll be able to stay Well, on. we're going to be really quick. But the moral of the story is I overcame Jazz Fitness, and Jazz Fitness became one of the most popular people that I would perceive, and people like him for some reason. <laughs> but people can't figure out the difference between Jazz Fitness, the character, and, ja- and me, Sean Jazz Stevens, and that goes back to that whole common sense thing that you would think that someone would understand. There's a performance piece, and then there's me. There's, I don't believe a lot of the things that Jazz, Ven- Jazz Fitness says. <laughs> And his views may be opinionated, but it also talks about the time period. Back when Jazz Fitness was on early YouTube was really when there was no restrictions on YouTube. Um, now yeah. there's all kinds of things up there. You know what I mean? So now I don't know if Jazz Fitness would be... Actually, Jazz Fitness would probably be on the cancel culture uh, list if he was still around on YouTube. All fantasy because he was a <laughs> chauvinistic, high-opinionated, egocentric punk who liked to shoot his mouth off about everyone else in the world. But that was who Jazz Fitness was, not me. Um, so, you know, that's the point there. So I don't want to yeah. make sure you don't lose Jaden because his, his uh, phone's almost dead, unfortunately. So, Jaden, uh, you know, we, I don't want to rush things or anything else, but did you want to have anything else to say before we let your phone die, I suppose? <laughs> No, I mean, I don't really have much else to say, I don't think. Uh, thank you for having me on. As and, always. As always. Yeah. Jaden, I wanted to say thank you, um, you know, publicly, uh, because um, a little while there I was having a little hard time because I was part of something for such a long time. It took me away from the things that actually mean something to me. And it was, uh, Jaden, you're one of the people who reached out and helped me get through a lot of those times. So I want to say thank you for reminding me who I am. And of reminding course, yeah. me of, you know, why I do what I do. And I want to say thank you for that. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I appreciate it. And I hope you know it is a mutual thing. You know, I'm, I got you as well. Um, and I want to say thank you for that and so forth before we let you go. Um, did you want to tell people anything big you got planned coming up? Any events? Anything big with parental um, possibilities? I don't think so. I think... Uh... That's about the extent. 
Sick. All right. How do people find awesome. you, Jaden, who is living under a rock somewhere? <laughs> you don't know? Oh, wait. oh I was asking where, if people want to know where they want to, where do they find you if they want to find you? Oh, okay. Sorry. Kind of glitched out. I Did I glitch? I'm, I'm good at glitching. Yeah, but, that, uh, Keanu sorry. Reeves again. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, if they want to find me, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Jaden Brooks, uh, and then uh, LinkedIn as well, Twitter, basically every social media platform, just under Jaden Brooks. So. And he's a tremendous young man. He's got a bright future ahead of him. We're very proud of him. Jaden, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. And yep. um, we look forward to having your dad on his first time here at the headquarters. Hopefully we don't uh, scare him off. <laughs> Hopefully give him <laughs> tips so he doesn't get so scared. And uh, he'll be good to go. And tell everyone there we said thank you and hello, and we hope they're well. Hopefully Connor's doing well as well. I heard him on the podcast recently. It was good to hear him again. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good stuff. Good yep. stuff. All right, Jaden, thank you for joining right. us on the headquarters. It's always a pleasure, and have a thank great you night. For me. You're welcome, brother. Have all your dreams come true. Peace. So everyone, that was Jaden Brooks, one tremendous young man who we appreciate everything that he does um, and everything that he does and stands for. Uh, He's a tremendous young man and he has a very vast knowledge of a lot of things. And I apologize that I feel like I talked more than I should have. But Jaden is someone who has... You know, overcome a lot to, you know, become who he is. He's been able to endure, you know, the the stresses of social media. What he said about, you know, the followers is absolutely true. And a lot of people fall into this trap that everyone on these social media things, if they're following you, if they're listening to you, that they are your friends, that they care generally. And as you heard, they're not always as... Um, awesome as they should be. They're not always as supportive as they should be. On this show, we have had people on, Jaden is one of them, who have gone on to do bigger and better things. When Jaden first came on this show, years ago now, um, he was just kind of getting his footing, and now he has run his business very appropriately. He has added um, responsibilities and, and work on um, and he's a great role model, both to his brother and people around the place. And to all those people out there who are currently doing the fitness world model thing, right? Yeah, it's great that there's so many people who are willing to do that. But it's people like Jaden Brooks, Jojo the bodybuilder, who really started the ball rolling on this and have done really well. Now, Jaden and Jojo, the bodybuilder, are completely different as far as goals go. Jojo wanted to become a bodybuilder, and Jaden just wants to be fit and healthy. But I bet there's a mutual respect there because they both have work ethic, and they both have a business mindset. Both are hardworking. Both are dedicated. Both are committed to achieving their goals. And that's ultimately what it's important here in the long run. Um, those people who are watching on YouTube continually, you know that I cut the YouTube feed off, the interview off, right after Jaden left. Um, but what I said about Jaden is accurate. He is a tremendous young man, and there was a time period recently that I had been so focused on a project that I'm no longer associated with that I forgot or not forgot, but I didn't put as much emphasis on the things and the people who helped me get to where I am. The people who know me in the end. The people who are respectful. The people who put the work in. Um, who have been on the show. Next month, Jaden's dad is going to be joining us for the first time on the f Headquarters podcast. Hopefully not the last. And we hope that more people will be bringing back and last month was our three-year anniversary on the show i didn't get to bring that up with Jaden really but we look back upon all of the amazing progress that he and other people have made over the years 
And we're proud of everyone who's been on the show. Everyone's gone on to do bigger and better things. Everyone who's been on this show. Look at anyone um, who has been on the show and look how amazing they're doing now. Um, I'm not saying we're any part of any of that, but we're a platform. We recognize their brilliance and their talents before, and other people are seeing it now and continuing to do so. I want to say a quick congratulations to a former guest and an old friend of mine and someone who I got to work with a long time ago, um, Christian Goodwin, who was a, when I met him, he was a tremendous young actor, and um, I helped get him into the role on Millwood. Um, I had a lot of part in recommending that they cast him in that project, and I also um, was going to have him work in my first project because he was a very talented actor. He has since gone out of acting, gone into the hip hop world and the R and B kind of a scene, and he does tremendous at that as well. Well, Christian, over last weekend, graduated from college. Can you believe that? College, and we are profoundly proud of Christian and all of his accomplishments. His mom is one of my favorite. Was one of my favorite people to interact with as well. And um, a happy belated Mother's Day to his mom, who, you know, was really vital in helping early on and someone who I have a lot of respect for. Christian always has a place on this F4L Headquarters podcast, and hopefully maybe we can bring him and other former guests on to kind of bring us back up to speed to where everyone is. In the three years we've been doing this show, um, you know, it's been a proud moment to watch everyone excel at everything that they do. Um, Henry and Jairo Menya. I mean, they have been absolutely owning everything that they're doing on the outside of our sh- of. They came on this podcast. They've done really well for themselves um, in the combat sport world. Boxing, MMA, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, winning boxing tournaments and martial art tournaments. And we're proud of Henry and Jairo Menya. The Menya Boys, who were on the show way back in the day, and we welcome everyone who has ever been part of the show prior, and welcome them back. Um, I want to let people know that I did let um, uh, Grace and the Super Duck Russell's family know that we were all thinking of them. We still continue to sending our heartfelt thoughts and prayers to them. They had a, for those people who don't know, they had a horrific house fire right on Mother's Day can't ask for a worse time for the best people out there um angela russell a uh, tremendous uh person in general one of the greatest mothers also uh grayson one of the most dedicated respectful young men you'll ever meet and his team behind him are all fantastic and, and apparently if people are rallying around them and i do encourage you guys to check out um the russells and helping them out in any way you can because they are fantastic human beings and we are honored to have both Angela and Grayson on our icons of the F4L show. Uh, Grayson is tremendous at both wrestling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he is just a tremendous um, human being. I believe he's going to do big and bigger and better things. And we hope that being someone who's lived through a house fire and being able to say that you can overcome that, I'm proof of that. And we send your wealth. We send you guys our our heartfelt prayers and thoughts. And um, we know that because of the fighters that the Russells are by nature, we know that they're going to be back to one hundred percent and back to being the you know what they're going to do and being and competing at the level that they were. And that there is no fire that's going to be extinguished the soul that they have. There is no fire that's going to keep them from relieving their goal in rising from the ashes will be an even bigger and stronger grace on the super duck russell is my prediction as we hope nothing but the best for all of them and of course grayson Jaden, his brother along the menu boys and numerous others will be taking part in our open mma tournament next month on june 4th and i uh, can't wait to see how that's going to be, and what, who's going to win this year. <clears throat> and there's a lot of competition this year. 
And we're looking forward to both bringing back former guests and new people back to the F-World Headquarters podcast, as I am committed to making the world a better place and introducing you guys to the most amazing people out there. I can tell you this, too. Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, we are going to get him back on here, too. Apparently, people are not happy with Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, I'm understanding. I'm guessing there's some type of conflict, maybe. I, I think it's more of a jealousy nature. You see, as I mentioned with Jaden earlier, sometimes when you get to be the best that you are, and sometimes when you get to be the level that Noah is, being an absolute force to be reckoned with on any kind of a, of a combat sport world, whether it be in a cage, on a mat, or on a field, when you are at the level that Noah the Nightmare Tyndall is, you can you know have room to conflict with that. But Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, make no, exp- no mistake about it, he puts the blood, the sweat, the tears into making those things happen. He puts a lot of training in. He has a lot of commitment, and we support him and his and his family and his group and his team. No other might need a Tyndall is successful because of himself, because of his work ethic, because of his drive, and because he goes in and he goes in and does his job well. He's a tremendous young man with the heart of a warrior, a true fighter who understands what being a champion is. You don't become a champion by hiding behind a title. You become a champion by defending it against everyone who comes before you who wants to take it from you and then sending them back to where they came from with their heads down <clears throat> instead of learning that they, what they should be doing is going with their... When they return after losing, they should go with their head up because they've learned something about themselves, hopefully. They've learned about the endurance and they had an opportunity to tangle, to... A role, if they say in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or whatever they call it, they had the ability to tangle with one of the best youth fighters in the world. And yeah, you might have come up short, but the fact that you showed up to challenge him is something is respectful. But to show up and just talk smack and be ignorant to those things, that's a coward's way to do things. No other might be a Tyndall is a true champion. If you want to be considered to be the best, then you've challenged the best. I overheard, I heard that the Adele boys are looking for challenges down in Florida still for a tournament. If you want to be comp- considered to be the best in the United States or in the world, you should be reaching out to the Adele boys. Because if I'll tell you this, knowing what I've seen over the years, now they have not been on the show yet. But it doesn't mean that we don't give them the same respect as we do everyone who has been on our show. They've been on our YouTube wrestling show, and I can tell you that they have drive, they have commitment, they have ambition. They are fighters. They are the future of the UFC. So are the other people I mentioned. So if you want to be considered to be a top fighter, if you want to raise eyebrows, you want to be considered to be the best in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or in kickboxing, or whatever the case may be, then you should be emailing and DMing the Adele boys to set that up. There's an old saying in wrestling, and good old legend in the business used to say, to be the man, you must beat the man. You have to decide whether or not you're going to walk that aisle. And if you want to be the best and be considered to be the best, then you need to compete against the top levels of competitors. The Adele boys are at the top of that chain. The Menya boys are at the top of that chain. Noah the Nightmare Tyndall is right up there. We have some new people coming into the show that are going to be part of our YouTube show, and we have a lot of faith in them as well, that they're going to be just as awesome as they are. Some people are afraid to compete on our show. Some people might not have the ambition to be the best. Some people maybe want to say that they're the best, but never have any kind of accolades to actually prove it, to go against someone they know is going to be a fight. As I said to Jaden earlier on the podcast, anyone can fight anyone at any point. And anyone, you could fight the same person 500 times and not learn anything, 
or you can challenge the biggest and the best to endure. So I encourage you guys who want to prove your worth, go reach out to the Adele boys and challenge them to a fight. They'll give it to you with respect, dignity. Another old friend of mine used to say, beat them if you can, they will survive if they let you. So we send all of our people the greatest ambition ever. And we hope that Noah comes back to... The, we, we hope Noah can come on the show eventually himself. And now with this technology, with this ability, we shall. Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, Grace and the Super Duck Russell, the Menya Boys, Henry and Hiro Menya, Anthony, Troy, Ty, and Mason, the Adele Boys... I think I said Grace and the Super Duck Russell already. Pedro Fontes. Sergi Yakolev. Isenia Verkovitz. And Biggie Elijah Furton are all people who are going to be stepping up to the plate to challenge the best. And to prove that they are icons of the F4, uh, icons of the MMA this year. And Jaden and his brother Lincoln also thrown into that mix. Heck, even I am coming out of retirement to join and be part of the tournament. And I can tell you, I'm going to bring my A game. And I'm sure there's going to be people who could probably take me too. But I want to show that I can be just as competitive as anybody else, and I have the accolades to compete in tr- in these events. So, next month's Open MMA Tournament kicks off June 4th, where we're going to start learning and finding out real quick who the icons of MMA are, as we have the very best in the world competing against, well, Best in the combat sports universe, not the best in the world. Because that is truly iconic. I have been blessed over the years to witness people who have had opportunity. People who have been robbed of certain opportunities and I could honestly and truthfully tell you that there will be nothing but respect if you can bring it to the people who want to be challenged there are going to be many people in the world who are going to want to challenge there are going to be many people in the world who want to claim that they're the best. But honestly, unless you're going to actually step up to the plate and prove it, then you haven't shown anything. So, with that, I want to say thank you to Jaden Brooks for stopping by as always. Stay up for our headquarters podcast where he is always at home, hopefully. We look forward to having his dad next month and whoever else is going to be coming on the F-World Headquarters podcast next. And for that, I am your host with the most, the F-World icon, Sean Jazz Stevens, saying, may all your dreams come true. Peace, everyone.